Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial. And you know, one thing that I love doing is creating exceptionally complex effects right inside my non-linear editing application because you know what time is always of the essence and as much as I like third-party compositing applications in most cases I don't have the time to get in and start exporting all my different elements to build complex animations like this really cool video wall you see right in front of you because I just need to get something like this done to amaze my client and to keep the whole creative process going well you know something with the power of Boris Continuum Complete 8's wild cards filter and a little bit of thought, you can create an awesome video wall like this literally in minutes as opposed to in most cases taking hours to attempt to create something like this that really you can't create inside your nonlinear editing application. You have to go to a compositing application to do so. Okay, let me show you how simple this is to do. Let's quit out of QuickTime and let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony, obviously command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. I'm just going to open my wildcard bin. And what I'm also going to do is just open my time lapse footage here because I need to create a sequence that's going to have six video layers in it. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hold on, Kev. Now suddenly there's six video layers. This already sounds complicated, but trust me, bear with me. We're going to show you how simple this is in just a second. Now, what I'm going to do is just pick shots that are pretty bright because I'm going to have them over top of a black background. So I'm just going to stick with brighter shots here. I'm just going to delete these audio layers because I don't need them. Let's just create our six channels. There we go. And we're just going to pick, like I said, shots completely random here. Random but bright. Let's just go through. Even this shot's not too bad. It's not too dark. Let's drop it in there. There we go. I'm liking that shot. That's a nice one. And we're just going to keep going. There's another good one here. And let's see, we are got sort of got our luck going with these bright shots here. Let's see, can we keep our luck going? There we go, that's good. Okay, so here's our six layers of video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is just close this time-lapse bin here. And we need to find the wild cards effect. Now, because we're technically dealing with cards inside of space, and there's gonna be multiple cards, these are actually considered particles. So what we're gonna do is navigate down to the particle section of Boris Continue Complete 8, and we're just going to simply come all the way down to the bottom. And here's the wild cards effect right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the effect, drag and drop it down onto the topmost layer. Now, it's important that you do that because the way that the effect works is when it's looking for multiple video layers, it's always going to look below the layer that it's currently on. So I always tell people, remember to stick that effect on the topmost layer. Now, you're going to see what happens is as soon as I drop the effect on, the topmost layer has now become a bunch of cards. We actually have 25 cards, five cards across, five cards down, and it's sitting on top of the layer directly below it. You can see there it is right there. But we know that I'm gonna to wanna to set this up to be over top of black. So what I'm gonna do is just hit Shift and Y uh, on the keyboard. That's my shortcut for effects mode. If you don't have effects mode mapped onto your keyboard, no problem. You can simply find it right over here in the composer window or right down here at the top of your timeline. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in and I always start pretty much with most of the effects I work on in the general control section. This effect is no different. What I'm gonna find in the general control section is that background color. You'll see right now, it's set to be the first layer below the one that I'm on. And we know that because I just showed that to you. But what I wanna do is put it to be nothing. I want it to be just on top of black. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that what we can actually do inside of this effect is we can adjust the individual cards themselves or we can adjust the array or the grid that these cards are sitting on. And what we can do here is I'm just going to twirl this back up for a second here is that we can come and like I said, we can adjust the cards. Cards are right here. Now you'll see the very first options we have is to get in and actually set what we want to be on the front of the cards. And of course, because this is a card and we know that cards have two sides, you can also set what is going to be on the back of the card. What I'm going to do here so I'm just going to come down here. I'm just going to spin these cards for a second here just because I want to show you that if I spin them right now, there's nothing. It's the same thing. So what we're going to do here, just for me to show this to you, because in the actual grid that we're going to be creating or the video wall, we're not going to have anything on the background. But I just want to show you that if I come up to the back face, I can actually set that to be, let's just set it to be the fourth below. And there we go. What I'll do is just come back down to spin. And like I said, you see that we can get in and adjust all of these cards individually with the spin. And what I also love is the fact that we can get in we can randomize that as well. So the spin is actually gonna look like all the cards sort of have a mind of their own. 
Now this randomness is actually a parameter inside the size. You'll see that we can get in, we can adjust the size to be different sizes. So we can adjust the size randomness, obviously the scale of the X and Y. We can get in and adjust the tumble. Tumble is just how these cards, let me just grab this here. Tumble them like such, how they fall forwards and backwards. Spin is obviously on the Y, so we have the X value for the tumble, the Y value for the spin, and of course the Z for the rotation. There we go. And of course, like I said, these can all be adjusted completely randomly. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set this back to be zero because I don't want there to be any size randomness. We'll just set the tumble, of course, back to be zero. I'm just going to come down here and make sure all these parameters are set to zero. Of course, set the spin randomness again to be zero. And of course, rotate again, zero. There we go. So we now have our grid back again. Because what I want to talk a little bit about for a second is the array, because what's also important to keep in mind right now is that we've been talking about these cards sort of in a very flat way, very X and very Y, but it doesn't need to be like that. You'll see that if I come down to the array, what we can do, and we we're just talking about adjusting the individual cards, is we can adjust everything, uh, we can adjust all the cards because the cards are actually sitting on an actual array or a grid. So I want you to think of this right here, and you'll see that we actually have the center, uh, center value of x, y right here set to zero as sort of a cross. Now what you need to do is you need to think of that not only in x, y space, but in z space as well, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. What I can do, and I'm just going to come down to rotation first, because I always find rotation is the easiest way to, to display what I'm talking about. I'm just going to grab the rotation, you'll see I can rotate all these cards as one. Now of course, I'm adjusting that on the y, I can do that on the x as well. I can also do that on the z. Now what we can also do it inside the array is set actually how many cards we have. You'll see right now it's set to five across and five down. Let's say I only wanted, you know, three across and three down. There we go. But what's also important here, sort of more so important, if you need to get in and you want to work in actual 3D space, is I can actually set the number of cards in Z space to be three as well. Now here's where the rotation is really going to come into play because you're really going to start to see what's going on here. There we go. There's those cards actually in three-dimensional space. Now, of course, I am working in 3D space, but I can still come up and I can still adjust, let's just say, the tumble of these cards. Again, still completely in 3D space. So you'll see this effect truly is a three-dimensional effect. And what's also important to keep in mind, and I'll just point this out right now, I'm not going to get too much into lighting, but you also have the ability to add a light in here. We can take this light and we can sort of position it wherever we want. And it's obviously going to reflect a real world situation. What's very cool about the lights, I'm just going to troll the cards and everything up here for a second, is once I enable the lights, a new section is actually enabled down here, which is, of course, the lighting section. You'll see right now the light is set to point, but I also have the ability to add spotlights as well. You can see a little bit of the card right there. In most cases, we leave these sort of as points, but I wanted to show this to you as well. So you see that you do have the ability to get in and add extra layers of realism by adding things like lights to your work. You'll see that you can actually get in and add up to three different lights in here. You'll see there's light one, light two, and light three. Right now I only have one light enabled, but what we're going to do is we're actually just going to disable lights so that everything as far as lighting goes is even. What we're also going to do is come back to the array here for a second because I want to set my rotation to be set back to zero. Now if there's any ever a point where you get where you know things are sort of out of control, you just need to reset everything back to the way it was when you applied the effect you can simply navigate up to the preset dropdown and just reset things to the factory defaults right here. Okay, now let me just head back to the array for a second because we're going to start setting this uh, grid up for our video wall. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come down to the array and I think maybe we'll just start with three layers. Now I don't need anything in the Z here, so that's okay. I just want to do that to show it to you. But what I do want to do is just increase the size of everything a little bit. But once I increase the size, I need to bring everything closer together. So I need to adjust the spacing here. So let's just adjust the Y spacing here to bring everything a little bit closer. That's pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the X spacing now as well. Very nice. A little bit closer. There we go. Now, of course, obviously, 3x3, three three, not even close to what we need. But what I want to do is just rotate the array a little bit here just so that I can start to see how this is going to go off into the distance. Very nice. Okay, so now what we can do is we can come and we can add more cards. Let's just add the number of cards here now. We're just going to bring it sort of way out here. Now, of course, once I do that, I need to adjust the X spacing. Very nice. And maybe we'll go even, you know, a little bit further. Maybe we'll just make seven cards here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now what I also need to do is I need to add some more cards in the Y because I want to actually have a camera move come down from the top to the bottom. 
So let's do that. Let's actually add the same amount of cards. I'm just going to add seven cards. And of course, we need to get in again and adjust the spacing on the Y. So let's just do that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, of course, we obviously have run into a big problem. I have the same card on every uh, I have the same image on every card inside of my video wall here, which is not what I want. So how do we get in and how do we change this? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl up a right. I'm just going to twirl down cards for a second because there is something that I didn't mention. What I didn't mention was is that right below where we actually set the front and the back, we can actually also get in and we have a couple other options that we have here. One that I really like is the fact that right now is that our image is set to show the whole image. In some cases you might want to do that. What you might actually want to do is you might want to show one image in parts. That's very cool. Now this in a lot of cases is what a video wall would actually look like. You would actually have one image displayed on a whole bunch of televisions. This is how you can actually get in and set that. Now to go along with being able to show one image in all of these different cards, what we can also do is we can actually shuffle that around a little bit, almost kind of like a jigsaw puzzle or kind of like our video wall has gone a little bit crazy. You know, it's a great parameter to have in there. I don't use it very much, but I like having the option in there of being able to do that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come back up here to the whole images because I want to show whole images on each one of the cards. But what I need to do is I need to get in and add more images in. So how do I do that? Well, here's how you do it. Right now, you'll see right down here at the bottom, I have an option called alternate face set or alternate face number one set to be nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change that to be the first layer below. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to see now that I have two images in my cards. Well, hold on a second. I now have something called alternate face two. Well, let's set that to be the second layer below. Oh, look at this. Alternate three, third, alternate four, fourth, alternate five, fifth. And take a look at that. Now, the thing that we have going on here is that we have the same image sort of doubled up. So how do we get in and adjust that? Well, you'll see right now the distribution is set to random. I could actually change that to be ordered. Or I could set it to be, you know, one of each random. You know, or I could set it to be, you know, ordered rows. You know, so you'll see that you have a lot of options as to how you want to get in and adjust this. And, you know, in a lot of cases on video walls, you'll see arrangements like this. Now, for me, in most cases, what I like to do is I like to just leave it as random. I don't necessarily mind if there's the same image because, you know, you might be moving down the video wall. You might be moving up the video wall. So I don't necessarily mind having it just as random. Now, what I need to do is I need to get in and add a little bit of animation to this. But there is one last parameter that I want to show you that's going to kind of, you know, sort of blow your mind a little bit as to the realism and the depth that the team at Boris FX has gone into in creating this effect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down a little bit because right below the cards and right below the array is a section called, appropriately enough, wild cards. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to troll wild cards down. You'll see that right now we have no option set for choose cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose, why don't we just choose all of the odd cards? Sure, why not? Now, as soon as I select that, you're going to see that these new parameters have now opened. Well, what I can now do is even get in and I can adjust, and I'm just going to adjust the spin here of just the odd cards. You'll see that I can obviously get in and I can say, well, just do that to one row or just do that to one column or just do that to all the odd cards. But where this, you know, sort of wild cards parameter really comes in to show you the realism inside this effect is if you come down to random choice. Now, as soon as I select random choice, a new parameter has actually appeared down here at the bottom called influence. Now, what does influence mean exactly? Well, I want you to think of it this way. I want you to imagine that you had a gust of wind, a focused gust of wind. And that gust of wind is blowing in one direction. And you took a bunch of feathers and you stuck your hand into that gust of wind and you let them go. Those feathers are going to go like crazy in the direction of that gust of wind. What if you took another batch of feathers and you held it close to the wind and you let it go? Well, they're going to be influenced by that wind. They're not going to go as hard as those other feathers did, but they're going to kind of go in the same direction, not as fast and not as straight, but they're going to kind of go. They're going to be influenced by that wind. What is happening here, and you'll see that if I come down and I adjust the influence parameter, you'll see that we have some of these elements rotated here. Well, if I suddenly get in and I adjust the influence, you're going to see that the cards around those ones that have rotated are now slightly starting to rotate. And you'll see, obviously, the more influence I add, the more that they'll rotate. They don't rotate as much, but they do rotate based on the rotation of the cards around them. Now, obviously, this will change based on whether you're adjusting, you know, position, you know, tumble, spin, rotate scale. But you'll see this is a way to get in and add another little extra layer of realism to your work.
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn wildcards off because let's get our video wall doing what we want it to do. I'm going to come back to the beginning of the effect and I'm going to come down to another parameter that we haven't talked about, which is the built-in camera. We're just going to do some very basic camera work here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to adjust the Y point just to bring the camera up a little bit here. That's pretty good because I don't want to go off the frame too much. You'll see over here, I don't have any more rows, which is fine. So what we're going to do is I'm simply going to right click and we're going to say add keyframe. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add a keyframe for everything here. There we go. I'm just going to come down to the end here. And of course, we're just simply going to take the Y value. I should probably add another keyframe here before I slide this down. I could obviously get in and add individual keyframes here, but this is really the only parameter that we're adjusting. And we're just going to adjust this here. Now, of course, what I could also do if I wanted to, and I mentioned this earlier, that I always love the general controls. What I can do is come all the way back up to general controls, and you'll actually see right below that is the render section. Render and general pretty much go hand in hand inside most of these effects. You'll see that I have the ability to add motion blur as well, which is also another added bonus to add a little bit more realism to your work. Well, what we're going to do, you'll see now that I've actually already animated this. Very nice. But what I did for the opening was I added one more effect here that I love adding, which is inside of film style, I added BCC Film Glow. I'm just going to hold Alt on Windows Option on the Mac. We're just going to drag this effect down, drop it on top. It's obviously a little bit too bright, so what I'm going to do is just take the intensity down to, I don't know, maybe about 25. That's looking very nice. You'll see that this looks a little bit blown out, but I like it. I like that sort of overblown look. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a quick render here. And really, I went through and I pretty much showed you how to do all of the, you know, different types of things you might want to do. Get in, rotate these cards, spin them, you know, adjust the array, you know, take and actually add depth to these elements and even get in and have certain cards influence other cards. But really, to create this video wall, you should be able to create a complex effect like this that, like I said, in most cases, you can only do in a compositing program like Adobe's After Effects literally in a span of a couple minutes. In most cases, that couple minutes is you know the time it would take you to export you know two maybe three clips really in this case we added these extra clips into the timeline inside the effect that's really where the only place that we dealt with any of these extra layers was we created the grid animated that camera rendered it out and we're going to see in just a second if all of our hard work or really our quick work has paid off and what I'm going to do now is just simply step out of effects mode by hitting Y on the keyboard I'm going to hit home to jump back to the beginning I'm going to hit play here and there's our cool video wall that if I wanted to, I could get in and rotate any of these little cards however I wanted to. But you'll see with the power of Boris Continuum Complete 8's wild cards and adding that extra little flair with Film Glow, you can take what would be normally a complex animation that you'd have to create in a compositing application and create it inside of your Avid Media Composer or Symphony timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.